In this video, we will create the trust display for our exhibit booth. Let's start by creating a new document so we can create our display booth in a separate file. Then we will create a rectangle to outline the perimeter of our display booth. Go to the file menu and choose new, then select create blank document and click OK. Right click in a blank area of the document and choose active layer scale. Set the scale to quarter inch and click OK. Double click on the rectangle tool in the basic palette. Set the width and height to 10 feet. Then choose the center control point. Uncheck position at next click. Set the X and Y values to zero and click OK. Now let's use the straight truss tool from the spotlight tool set to create the straight trusses for our booth. In the spotlight tool set, activate the straight truss tool Click once towards the upper left corner of the rectangle, then tab into the floating data bar and enter five feet for the length field and press enter or return twice to create the truss. Click OK to accept the default settings. In the object info palette, change the following settings. Height and width to eight inches, the cord width to two inches, Set the top and side ladder bar dimension to 0.5 inches, and then set the top and side lacing diameter to 0.5 inches. Zoom in on the center of the truss and find the top center point. Click and drag this point to the top center of the rectangle. Now we need to duplicate this truss in place and then change the Z height of the duplicated truss. First, we will need to enable the duplicate in place preference. Go to the Tools menu, then down to Options, and choose Vectorworks Preferences. In the Edit tab, on Windows, enable the Allow Control Click in Place Duplication option, or on Mac, enable the Allow Option Click in Place Duplication option, and then click OK. Hold down the Control key on Windows or the Option key on Mac, then click once on the straight truss to duplicate it in place. The duplicated truss is now selected. In the Object Info palette, set the Z height to 10 feet. Switch to a right isometric view and render in OpenGL. Confirm you have two straight trusses. Now let's place a couple more trusses. Switch back to a top plan view. Use the Control-Alt-Click shortcut on Windows or the Option-Command-Click shortcut on Mac on the straight truss to invoke the Create Similar Object command. Click once towards the left side of the rectangle and move your cursor down vertically. Tab into the floating data bar, set the length field to four feet and press enter or return twice. In the object info palette, set the connection interval to four feet. Then use smart points to align the upper left corner of this truss with the midpoint between the top left and center left points of the rectangle. Use the snap loop as needed. Now, use the control or option click drag method to duplicate this truss on the other side of the rectangle as shown. Next, we will use the curved truss tool from the Spotlight toolset to create curved truss sections for our booth. Activate the Curved Truss tool in the Spotlight toolset. Click on the Preferences button in the toolbar. Set the following parameters. Diameter to 5 feet. Segment arc to 18. Height and width to 8 inches. Top and side ladder bar dimension to 0.5 inches. And top and side lacing diameter to 0.5 inches. Then click OK. Click once towards the center of the rectangle. Then move your cursor down vertically and click a second time to set the rotation and place the curved truss. Switch to the Selection tool and place your cursor over the top left corner of the truss. When the arc cue appears, click and drag the curved truss to the lower left corner of the horizontal straight truss. When the bottom left cue appears, release the mouse button to move the curved truss. 
Use the snap loop if needed. Now use control click or option click to duplicate this truss in place. Set the Z height of the duplicated truss to 10 feet. Then switch to an isometric view and select both of the curved trusses and then switch back to a top plan view. Use the control or option click drag method to create duplicates of these curved trusses towards the right of the rectangle. With the duplicated trusses selected, press control L on Windows or command L on Mac to rotate the curved trusses 90 degrees to the left. Repeat this until the truss appears as shown. Move your cursor to the upper right corner of the truss. When the arc cue appears, click and drag the trusses to the lower right corner of the horizontal straight truss. When the bottom right cue appears, release the mouse button to move the curved trusses. Again, use the snap loop if needed. Switch to a right isometric view and review the changes. Switch back to a top plan view when you're finished. Next, we're going to create another straight truss segment, then we will adjust the hanging angle. Use the Control alt click or Option-Command-Click shortcut again on the horizontal straight truss to invoke the Create Similar Object command. Click once outside of the rectangle and move your cursor to the right. Tab into the floating data bar, set the length field to 10 feet, and press Enter or Return twice. In the Object Info palette, set the connection interval to 10 feet, then scroll down and set the hanging angle to 90 degrees. Click and drag the top left corner of the vertical straight truss and align your cursor with the upper left corner of the horizontal straight truss. Use the snap loop to zoom in. When the top left cue appears, release the mouse button to move the truss. Now switch to a right isometric view and uh, render in OpenGL to review the placement of the vertical straight truss. You will notice the truss extends into the lower horizontal straight truss. Let's adjust it now. With the vertical straight truss selected, set the Z height to 8 inches in the Object Info palette, then adjust the length and connection interval to 9 feet 4 inches. Switch back to a top plan view and use the Control alt click or Option command click shortcut again on the vertical straight truss to invoke the uh, Create Similar Object command. Click once outside of the rectangle and move your cursor to the left. Tab into the floating data bar and set the length field to 9 feet 4 inches and press Enter or Return twice. Switch to the Selection tool and move your cursor over the upper right corner of this truss. When the bottom left cue appears, Click and drag the truss to the right side of the horizontal straight truss. Use the snap loop to zoom in, and when the top right cue appears, release the mouse button to move the truss. Switch back to a right isometric view. You'll notice that this truss is sitting too low. In the Object Info palette, set the Z height to 8 inches. Next, let's create two shorter vertical trusses and place them at the front of the booth. Go back to a top plan view. Use the control alt click or uh, option command click shortcut again on one of the vertical straight trusses to invoke the create similar object command. Next, click once towards the bottom right corner of the rectangle and move your cursor to the left. Tab into the floating data bar and enter 4 feet 4 inches for the length field. Press enter or return twice to create the vertical truss. Switch to the Selection tool, move your cursor over the bottom right corner of the truss, and activate the Snap Loop. When the top left cue appears, click and drag the truss over the bottom right corner of the right straight truss. Use the Snap Loop again. When the top right cue appears, release the mouse button to move the truss. Use the Control or Option Click Drag method to create a duplicate of this truss on the left side. Let's take a look at these trusses in 3D. Switch to a right isometric view. 
Because we shortened the length of these trusses, we need to adjust their connection interval and Z height. Select both of the short vertical trusses and in the object info palette, set the connection interval to 4 feet 4 inches. Then set the Z height to 8 inches. Now let's duplicate both of these trusses and place them on the other side of the straight truss. Make sure both vertical trusses are selected and then switch to a top plan view. Use the Alt click drag or Option click drag method again and the same snapping techniques shown previously to duplicate these trusses to the other side of the straight trusses as shown. Switch back to a right isometric view. With the two duplicated vertical trusses selected, go to the Object Info Palette and set the length and connection interval to 10 feet. Now we have multiple straight trusses positioned vertically. Switch back to a top plan view. We will create two more curved truss objects, then using the Draw 3D Only option and Rotation commands, we will rotate these trusses in 3D. Use the Control alt click or Option command click shortcut again on one of the curved trusses to invoke the Create Similar Object command. Click once to the right of the other trusses, then move your cursor up vertically and click a second time to place the curved truss. Set the diameter to 6 feet 8 inches in the Object Info Palette. Switch to a right view. Using the Selection tool, click and drag the curved truss vertically until it is above the shorter vertical truss. In the Object Info Palette, scroll down and check the Draw 3D Only option. Press Ctrl L on Windows or Command L on Mac to rotate the curved truss 90 degrees to the left. Now switch to a top plan view and use the Ctrl or Command L shortcut again. Using the snap loop, align the bottom right corner of this truss with the bottom right corner of the shorter vertical truss on the right. Next, switch to a right view. Click and drag the bottom left corner of the curved truss vertically and snap it to the upper left corner of the vertical truss. Now switch back to a top plan view, then use the control or option click and drag method to create a duplicate curved truss on the left side of the booth. Again, use the snap loop and snapping techniques shown previously to align the duplicated truss. Finally, switch to a right isometric view and render an OpenGL to review the changes. We now have all the needed trusses for our truss display. All that is left is to place all of the trusses into a separate class. Use the Select Similar tool and then click on one of the straight trusses to select all of the straight trusses. Now hold the Shift key and click on one of the curved trusses to add them to the selection. Go to the Object Info Palette, click on the Class pop-up menu, and choose New Class. Name the class Truss and click OK.